topic is pharmacology. And just like Dakai said, he's right, pharmacologists work with medicine. But what does a pharmacologist do? Well, Kelsey, that's an amazing question. So let's talk about what pharmacologists do. Pharmacologists are like the scientists that investigate how our medicines work inside our body. And they can help us feel better whenever we're sick. They're also detectives. They explore different parts to create medicines to ensure they are safe for people to use. So they run on very special studies called clinical trials. And clinical trials test how these medicines make sure they work, but they also don't hurt the person that takes them. So it's very fascinating stuff. Really fascinating, right? So pharmacologists do three main things. First, they explore different ways to develop medicines. So they develop ways to help people who are sick. They also make sure that these medicines are safe for people, right? Because that's really important. We don't want to give something to somebody that's going to make them more sick. And then number three, just like Miss Andrea said, is they test how good these medicines are, how they work using something called a clinical trial. Clinical trials are used to test drugs to see whether they work or not. And so they are really, really, really important. So we're going to watch a video now about how medicines work in our body. Have you ever wondered what happens to a painkiller like ibuprofen after you swallow it? Medicine that slides down your throat can help treat a headache, a sore back, or a throbbing sprained ankle. Let's talk about something really interesting called protein binding. Protein binding is like a special handshake between medicine, okay, so between the medicine and a specific protein in our body. The medicine, the drug comes into our body and goes through our circulatory system. And then once it finds a protein that it likes and wants to help, it's going to bind to it, right? And they do like a special handshake. When it grips really, really tightly, some magic happens, right? And it kind of talked about it a little bit in the video, uh, but it starts working, right? It starts doing its job. It starts getting rid of pain. It starts getting rid of inflammation inside of our body. And so that's how protein binding works. To go even further, the way that pharmacologists or different scientists design drugs is that they design a specific drug that will bind, so we'll have a handshake with a specific protein. Let's watch a video about protein binding. More than 100 years ago, a German doctor by the name of Paul Ehrlich advanced the idea that a chemical substance could selectively affect physiological processes in the body. Cell stress happens when our cells in our body, right? So we're made up of lots and lots of millions of cells right? and they're really, really small. Like you need to look under a microscope to be able to see a cell. Right? And so cell stress happens when your cells get upset because something's not quite right, right. And this could be because of a lot, a lot of different reasons. But when those cells become stressed, they can't do their job properly. And when they're not able to do their job properly, that's when we become sick. What do you think can cause a cell to become stressed what do you guys think doing stuff a little hard and then like your cells just get like stressed out then that's maybe when you could start that's maybe when they start getting very stressed Exactly. Great, great answer. Thank you. So what causes cells to become stressed, right? We talked about it a little bit already. Infections. When somebody gets COVID, COVID is a virus. It infects our cells, causes them to become stressed. A cold, when we have the flu, now the virus causes our cells to become stressed, have an injury. So we fall over and we scrape our knee. Those skin cells, they're grazed or they're cut and they become stressed. Another example might be a harmful chemical. It could be a chemical that's in the air, you know, a chemical that burns us. And those are all examples of how our cells might become stressed. Right? So we have another question for you. So by chance, what is a neurodegenerative disease? Allison? Um, when I think a neurodegenerative um, disease is, is because me looking at the picture closely, I see a brain that's like, uh, that's not so good. And it's like all apart and it's becoming a little rotten. And then I see a healthy brain which is um which is like which is all pink and it has a little bit of blood left so i think it means like 
when your brain gets gets like um cell stress that is an amazing response from our neurologist so neurodegenerative diseases are very important because they're illnesses that slowly break down our brain but what is also part of the nervous system are nerves so not only is our brain affected but our nerves slowly break down and as they get weaker and they start to die that starts leading us problems right because our brain is used for almost everything we can't remember as much, we can't move as well, and we can't do a lot of the things that we love. So a lot of these um, nerve cells and brain cells slowly break down and die, and scientists are very confused of why it could happen. Some examples can be Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and ALS. So we're going to dive in a little bit more into what happens to these diseases with um, dopamine. So we, we just mentioned nerve cells, but who remembers what a neuron is, right? We talked about it in our first week with Riley. Who remembers what a neuron is? A neuron, just making sure, um, it like sends messages to your brain and like your brain sends the messages so like you can move your arms and everything. Exactly. The responsibility of a neuron is to send messages, electrical signals. Remember when we talked about the EEG and we talked about the electricity in your brain? Sends electrical signals all through your body to give instructions, right? And so we talked about it in the Neurophysiology Week where it sends instructions, I want to lift my arm, right? That would be one example, right? But neurons have lots of different messages that they send, right? And so now we're going to learn about a special type of messenger, right? And that is dopamine. Can we all unmute ourselves and say dopamine? Dopamine. Dopamine. Exactly. And so dopamine is a special type of messenger. Remember we talked about the spaces, the synapse, the synapse that we have between neurons. Dopamine is a special type of messenger that moves between the synapse from one neuron to the next neuron and sends messages and it's responsible for helping us feel happy and motivated. So dopamine is really important, right? So when we're playing on the playground or we're having fun with our family, we're laughing, our body is releasing dopamine everywhere. Why is dopamine relevant in terms of neurodegenerative diseases? And it's because understanding dopamine in pharmacology is really important in our brain, right? The dopamine levels in our brain are really important for neurodegenerative diseases. And that's because medicines that are able to increase the dopamine levels can help with conditions like Parkinson's disease, while drugs that are able able to decrease dopamine levels can help with things like schizophrenia. And so if we can find drugs that can either decrease or increase these levels of dopamine, it can help to try and treat some of these diseases about this. So now we have an activity, a yummy activity, and it's going to demonstrate some of the things that we've been talking about. So step one, can everybody grab your Oreo? What is the Oreo? In this experiment, what is the Oreo? The cell. It's the cell, exactly. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up our cell. Oh, no. What we're going to do is we're going to add stress to our cell. Cells become stressed because of injuries or infections or harmful chemicals, something externally that causes the cells to become stressed and damaged so that they're not able to do their jobs properly. Then we're gonna add nerds to our cells. So this is us adding stress to our cells. Okay, so we all added stress to our cells, right? Go ahead and close your cell. What do you what do you guys think we're gonna do next? We have our our cell and it's stressed, and we don't want it to be stressed. So what are we gonna do, Ezra? We're gonna put we're, we're gonna put the rainbow um airheads on top of the Oreo. Exactly. But and what's that? What's that an example of? What are we doing there? We learned it earlier. Uh, I need a help. You need help. That's fine. Sometimes scientists need help. Who can help Ezra out? What are we doing when we add the airhead? L? The airhead is like the medicine. It's gonna protein bind. Protein bind, exactly. Okay, so, so once we have done our protein binding, our cell is now healed. You gotta tell me if it tastes good or not. 
<laughs> it does. <laughs> Andrea said it's <laughs> Al doesn't like it. Okay, Farah, do you like it? Does it taste good? Yeah, it tastes Jazzine's just eating the airheads on their own. Today, I'm gonna let them introduce themselves. Hi everyone, I'm James or Mr. Tran, whichever you prefer. Thank you so much for having me today, and I'm really glad to be here. Uh, it's a very exciting time to be a pharmacologist, and I love how inquisitive and curious you all are. It's the perfect makings of a scientist. Um, and if you're ever interested in a career in science, I think it's a great idea. It can be hard and challenging, but it is very rewarding, um, and I hope I can explain why. So why do we need new medicines? And I'm, I'm sure you all already know this. It's, you know, Sometimes we just don't have the right medicine for people. And although our, you know, our doctors, our nurses, and you know, EMTs, any other kind of healthcare professional, they, they work really hard to help us stay healthy. And, and so what, what do medicines actually do? And, and interestingly, whether they're synthetic or natural or found in nature, you know, whether they grow in a tree or they come from a lab, all medicines have a target, right? They all come, they get into our body and they, they work on what's usually a protein. Some, sometimes it's not a protein. Sometimes they might, you know, target something like cholesterol to help get, get rid of it from our blood if we have too much. But usually a, a medicine will bind to like a protein. When we talked about protein binding, the medicine's got to fit just right into the right spot on a protein. Um, and so once the medicines are in our body, you know, natural or synthetic or anything, even like food in a sense, um, what happens once we take medicine? So the first thing a pharmacologist studies is what we call pharmacokinetics, which is just a fancy word for what our bodies do. Or if you want to break down the word, it's pharma is like medicine and kinetics is like movement. You know, how does the medicine move? And so medicine does a few things in our body. Um, the, the first four things are really we um, absorb the medicine, right? So we take the medicine, it has to get into our cells somehow. And the next thing our body does is we distribute the medicine. You know, it gets into our cells and maybe there's some extra and it has to go to other cells. And where, how does it go around and move into the body? Usually when we take medicine, it goes, you know, we, we it's like a pill or a capsule and then it goes into our stomach and then to our intestines. And then from the intestines, the medicine gets absorbed into our bloodstream. And then our blood vessels take the medicine everywhere it needs to go, whether it's the brain or the heart or the lungs. And then the next thing we do is metabolism. We metabolize the, the medication or the drug. And that just means that some proteins like enzymes, like the, one, like the last thing we saw before, the medicine can't stay in our body forever. Our, our bodies really, they want to break it down because it's the medicine's not usually there. Whether it's good for us or not, our, our bodies do a really good job of taking a medicine and turning it into something else. And the reason we metabolize the medicine and turn it into something else is for this last step, which is, um, we call it excrete, we excretion. We study pharmacodynamics. What does the medication do to us? So pharmacokinetics is what we do to the medicine, and pharmacodynamics is what it does back to us. And depending on the medicine, it can be a lot of different things. Um, sometimes a medicine or drug helps uh, stop, makes more or makes less of a certain protein, right? Um, sometimes it can stop a protein from working normally. Like sometimes the medicine can just bind to a protein and then the protein can't do anything else. And that's that's really, really helpful when um, maybe it's a protein that that you don't need or something that is making you feel worse. Uh, this first step is kind of what we went over earlier, you know, finding the target, right? What protein do we have to target to make the disease go away or to make the disease less severe or less bad? And then once we find the protein and the molecule, then we can test it. Oftentimes we'll first test it in cells. The next step after we call them cell models, after a cell model, we'll try an animal model. The most common ones are mice and rats. Animal studies are very serious. It's um, We try to avoid them as much as possible because um, you know we, we don't want to hurt the animals, but they, they help us a lot to find out if a medication is safe before a human tries it. My, my dream really is to help discover not only new things about the brain, but new medicines that help people that have brain diseases. Guys, James was awesome, wasn't he? Can we say thank you for him coming to talk to us? Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.